And welcome back, Asante Sana, for keeping it K24 this morning. My name is Shiko Kaitani. Welcome to our social hour. Let's talk a little bit about mental health and in specific suicide. September is Suicide Prevention Month. And so today we are talking about how we can actually go about finding the solutions. Yes, the awareness is out there. What next? And that's what we want to ask you this morning. What are you going to be doing or how can you go ahead uh, and help someone who's actually at the brink of suicide? How would you help someone with suicidal thoughts? Why don't you let us know through our social media platforms at K24TV on Instagram, Facebook and Twitter. As you get working on that, allow me to introduce my panelists this morning. I am very excited to have at the far end, Ellie Oenga, who is the founder of the BU program, uh, currently rolling out in a number of institutions right at the center, not a stranger to the show, Mr. Ricks. <laughs> who we also know as Onyango Otieno, I like to call him Double O, who is a mental health advocate. Karibu Tana to the show. And then right next to me is Dr. Joshua Ora, a medical doctor. Santi Sana for you. being with us this morning. Okay, so um, before we actually get, um, you know, sharing statistics that we have and some of the um, interesting things that we came across even on the internet, including some of those famous suicides or notable suicides, um, I actually want to start off with you, Dr. Tari, um, in regards to the definition and the linking of suicide and depression. Um, thank you. Uh, suicide is uh, the intentional killing of oneself. Mm -hmm. That is what we call suicide. Yeah. But then there are other definitions, attempted suicide, mm -hmm. completed suicide, and many other things when it comes to definition. Yeah. Uh, it is linked to depression particularly mm -hmm. and other mental illnesses, mm -hmm. uh, not just depression. Mm. So depression is one of those uh, top risk factors for suicide mm -hmm. and suicide attempts. Yeah. Yeah, so not only depression in the bracket of mental disorders, You're even right. other mental disorders, personality disorders, mm -hmm. schizophrenia, mm -hmm. and many others. Yeah, but mainly depression at the top of the mental disorders that predispose people to committing or attempting to commit suicide. Yeah, okay. I'm going to ask my director to cue for us um, a reel that we actually prepared of notable suicides uh, that we are probably all familiar with, and you can actually let me know, uh, Neville, when you're good to go with that. Uh, but from what I saw, even just when I'm digging up, you know, trying to understand, just trying to see who, who's been on that list, what you will notice is that the men tend to be more than the women. So are we still on that story, um, um, double O, on men being the victims here and dealing with especially, sorry to say, but depression in regards mm. to, to this discussion? Well, the funny statistic about that mm. is uh, World Health Organization reports that more women attempt suicide mm. than men, but men have higher uh, completion rates yeah mm -hmm. and so that's what they call this mm -hmm. the gender paradox like mm -hmm. um it's it's more men who complete suicide but it's more women who attempt suicide yeah so we are having the case that you know men are more aggressive with the way they take their lives away mm -hmm. um, and uh, women tend to use softer methods to take away their lives that are easier to intervene yeah um, and so we, they have lower suicide completion rates, but mm -hmm. the, the, the rates are pretty much the same. Men mm -hmm. are, um, you know, killing themselves more um, and um, the causes are as many as they come. Yeah, so men tend to, to be more drastic in regards to their approach. Yes. Ellie, this is just heartbreaking and you've done a lot of work on the ground, even with young people, and I think I think that's our focus group even today, I, I dare yeah, say. Yeah. Um, what do you think young people are battling with? Because he said it's not just depression, there are other causes that will lead up to suicide. But from your work with young people on the ground, what seems to be the issue and what are they crying out to us to say or to notice? I think Sheikh, thank you for that and thank you for having me on the show. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> in my opinion, mm. this generation 
has a mental warfare. You know, in the past, we had World War II, mm. we had all these wars, so every generation has a battle. Mm -hmm. And for this generation, the battle is for the sanctity and the safety of their mental health. Mm -hmm. And it's good that we are having such shows because we are raising awareness and then we are yeah. now beginning even to talk about solutions. Mm -hmm. Therefore, uh, and, and you see now, it is more visible. Maybe in the past, our grand parents also fought this warfare yeah but it was not visible we now have more mm -hmm. tv channels we have social media uh, you know uh, in our, on our fingertips so yeah. the visibility of it also mm -hmm. is quite out there so we we now see it more we hear of it more yeah personally in the past two months i know up to four families mm -hmm. in kenya that have had um, you know a uh, mm -hmm. family member uh, yes, commit, commit suicide yeah and uh, my heart goes out to all those families yeah who've had to have a loved one okay exit in yeah. such a manner you know um doc we, when we had a previous discussion with ellie and a group of panelists pretty much around the same discussion on mental health uh one panelist uh, who's been through it uh, was talking about how in this country mental health is not regarded as an illness or depression is not an illness we don't actually look at it as an illness uh, what's your take on that it's it's actually true that mm. as a country we probably have put relegated mental health well behind the scenes a yeah. lot and even when you're talking about universal health coverage you the things that are highlighted mm -hmm. are very rarely will you see anything being highlighted mental health mm -hmm. uh, related yeah and part of it is because of our the stigma around mental health issues mm -hmm. so even the patient who has a mental condition yeah uh, before they actually come to the hospital mm -hmm. they probably are fighting with that decision of how will people view me mm -hmm. how will even the doctor that i'm going to see yeah. at my hospital yeah. will see me so the typical patient who comes for example at the bliss clinics where i work they will at times it takes they'll come with a different story so it takes a bit more of insight from the doctor to investigate and actually mm -hmm. clinch that this person does not have a physical illness mm -hmm. what brought them was some psychosocial or mental mm -hmm. stuff that mm -hmm. brought them to hospital so mm -hmm. i think the stigma and then the lack of political goodwill yeah uh, contributes more to that uh, the way we've treated health care, uh, mental health in this country. Right, yeah. right. Um, double O, in your opinion, um, what seems to be the ways that young people are expressing themselves? We're going to highlight your case in just a minute, and I think yours is quite unique. But what are we seeing on the ground now? A lot of things. Um, when we were young, a lot of many of us grew up in very conservative families. We mm. weren't given space to express ourselves as kids. And then you get to 15, 16, 17, 18, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden you have a Facebook account. Yeah. Or a Twitter account or an mm -hmm. Instagram account where nobody's telling you what to do with it. Yeah. And so you all of a sudden have space which you were never really taught how to use mm -hmm. and you can basically say anything you want on it, you see? So the fact that a lot of us are looking for those safe spaces that mm -hmm. we didn't have when we were children, um, and coupled with the fact that there's so much social pressure on young people to be correct, and yet we, um, we are experiencing a lot of uh, social integration with, uh, with uh, the way our social cultures are, are, yeah. are, have, been, have been for the longest time. Mm -hmm. Um, it's, it's becoming very difficult for just a young person to exist and right. say that I, I am here and I count. Yeah. Because everywhere they go, their voice is not heard. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to use any kind of um, expressive outlet I can right. to tell people mm -hmm. this is what I'm trying to say, but mm -hmm. you've not been listening. Mm -hmm. So it's from all of Okay. It's all over. It's, it's in the clubs, it's, it's in sex, it's in uh, crazy music, it's yeah. in substance abuse, it's in drugs, it's in all sorts of things. And all this is, young, is someone trying to reach out. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we actually want to ask you to weigh in on our discussion this morning. Go ahead and give us a call. Our numbers are at the bottom of your screen, or if you prefer to get in touch with us through our social media platforms, why don't you? Uh, let us know how you would actually go about helping that individual overcome, um, you know, these attacks 
attempts and even how do we go about actually bringing those numbers down? We'd love to hear from you this morning. Even as we get back to um, our discussion, I'm going to ask my director to actually play a reel of some of the notable suicides that we have seen over the past couple of years. Um, and even as those images continue to just show up, you know, we've got so many um, from Alexander McQueen um, to the likes of Marilyn Monroe, Anthony Bourdain, who was actually a TV personality. All these individuals, um, you know, killed themselves. Um, someone like Avicii, a, a lot of young people were so heartbroken to see that DJ kill himself. One thing that did stand out for me, Ellie, is that as much as, yes, there are all these famous people who've taken their own lives, there were quite a number of notable students who were actually listed in some of these mm -hmm. reports mm -hmm. who killed themselves because of cyber bullying. Yep. It's a thing. Yes, yes. It's a thing. Mm -hmm. So why don't you give us your thoughts on that, on how social media has such a huge impact on, on all of this, on mental health? Uh, first of all, before I comment on that, if mm. you look at the real running and all, all those famous people, yeah. what is also important to note, how many more will have been on that list mm -hmm. who are not on that list? Mm. Uh, J.K. Rowling, yeah. by the age of 29, she attempted suicide. Wow. At the age of 17, she was rejected from college. Mm -hmm. At the age of 24, she had a miscarriage. Yeah. At the age of 25, she was divorced. At the age of 30, she attempted suicide. But by the age of 47, she sold 10 million copies yeah. after releasing the book. Yes, of Harry Potter. Uh, Harry Potter. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Abraham Lincoln yeah. failed and failed and failed, mm -hmm. attempted suicide, yeah. tried to vie for Congress three, four, five times, failed, tried to vie for vice president, failed. Mm -hmm. But the year 1860, when he vied for president, he won. So he could have been on that list. Yeah. J.K. Rowling could have been on that list. Mm -hmm. I could have been on that list. Yeah. Ricks could have been on that list. So almost all of us face a challenge in life yeah. where we come to a point mm -hmm. that how do, we, how do I handle this? Yeah. And it's the solution and the support system that makes the difference mm -hmm. between who gets on that list and yeah. who doesn't. Mm. So some of us are here or Rix is here, or you are here, mm -hmm. because someone intervened in the right way at the right time yeah. without making you feel like a victim. Mm. So going back to social media, like yeah. Rix is saying here, mm. there is so much pressure to conform yeah. and be mm. what we are not. And that's why the Be You campaign, uh, is, campaign is running. Yeah. Uh, it, it was founded after talking to so many young people. Mm -hmm. And you find that there is pressure at home yeah. because the father is an engineer. The pressure starts at home. Right. And the solution will mm -hmm. have to start at home. Mm -hmm. Not in the government, not with the doctor. Mm -hmm. the, where the problem starts is where the solution also will start. Right. So you find the pressures build up. Yeah. At home, you are socialized mm -hmm. to be a certain way yeah because your mom and dad and your cousins are mm -hmm. a certain way yeah you get out to society social media mm -hmm. is also pushing you to conform to be a certain way right you go to college your peers yeah they are a certain way so they're also trying to mold you yeah to fit a certain way so formal is a real thing it is a we real keep thing. talking about formal like a joke but yes. fear of missing out yes is a serious thing yes so yeah. there's an agenda out there mm -hmm. and and it's not a formal agenda so very few get to know it yeah to make you a certain way mm -hmm. and unfortunately we are created to be us only me can be me yeah so anytime i attempt mm -hmm. to go outside who i am yeah then those cracks start appearing wow so uh, the sooner we realize that being you and yeah. accepting you as you are mm -hmm. with your strengths and with your weaknesses with your cracks and yeah. with your acne mm -hmm. with your you know mm -hmm. shape your and your yeah. weight yeah the sooner we start easing off mm -hmm. these pressures okay and then we are comfortable in our own skin nice yeah. uh doc yeah. when you actually go about diagnosing um a patient if i can call them that um what do you actually look out for because i think for a lot of people uh, mental health is a very abstract thing yeah. it's it's not a symptom like the way i can cut my hand or i've got something gr you know a growth or something like that that you can actually see so when you talk about diagnosing someone what are you really looking out for to either decide okay this person is depressed or this person is schizophrenic i don't know how do you go about it yeah 
so usually when you're diagnosing the patient, yeah. uh, many times, first of all, I will say that they will come with something else and not really the mental issue. Mm. And so at times the diagnosis actually takes time before you actually clinch that the problem yeah. is more mental than physical. Mm -hmm. It may take several hospital visits. Oh. And actually it's said that most yeah. people who commit suicides, mm -hmm. many of them had visited hospital before they actually did that. Right. And so when you're diagnosing, you get the history. Mm -hmm. And there are some things that will probably point you to someone who has red flags. Yes. So people who probably have attempted suicide before yeah. are more likely to want to do it again. Mm -hmm. People who have yeah. had a history of mental disorders, yeah. or even if from their story, like yeah. if it's depression, somebody who's had depressed mood for yeah. most days of the week in at least two, two weeks, mm -hmm. then that person probably qualifies to be looked at yes. as someone suffering from depression. Right. And so... The diagnostic workup is mainly based on the story the patient tells you, mm -hmm. listening to the patient. Because mm -hmm. when it comes to mental health, there are actually very few tests you can do. Right. It's listening to the story of the patient. Right. And when you listen, then you can pick those things that will, at the end of the day, mm -hmm. tell you that this person has depression, this yeah. person is a high risk, mm -hmm. a suicide mm -hmm. uh, attempt person. Mm -hmm. Or even as sometimes you get someone who's come to hospital yeah. having attempted suicide. Yeah. And so for such a person, what you will do is to link them up with a support, uh, a group, support or, yeah. group or a psychiatrist or somebody who can help them out through the okay. journey. Okay. All right. I understand we've got Bogwa from Limuru on the line. Good morning, Bogwa. Hello. Hello. Yes, Bogwa. Karibu sana. Yeah, yes. Go ahead. My name is Kagwema Bogwa from Limuru. Mm -hmm. And I'm a counseling psychologist. Yes. And I want to contribute to the debate going on about suicide. Eh? Mm -hmm. I want to concur with that gentleman who runs the program, BU. Yes. That uh, the, the major reasons why people commit suicide. Eh? Hello? Yes, yes, go ahead. Why people commit suicide is that they do not accept themselves. They are forced to be who they, they are not. Eh? Mm. Like uh, the, the way forward is that people should be taught life skills. Life skills about understanding themselves. Eh? Mm hmm. If you understand who you are, you express your inner potential. Yeah. You depend on what we call the internal locus of evaluation. You evaluate yourself from inside or from, from outside. Eh? Yes. You don't allow other people to be the barometer of your life. Eh? Mm. So when, when, when you believe in yourself, you'll be able to express your potential. Right. You'll become who God intended you to be. Mm -hmm. And you'll not leave other people's lives. Okay? Okay. So the question of comparing other people with, uh, with whatever, and, and again, the, 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 the government should, uh, should channel a lot of resources on the mental health industry. Eh? Right, thank I'm you. I'm that because I happen to have a child who has got a, a mental condition and uh, not a lot is coming at your area. So we have to fight a lot of stigma in yeah. Yapa. Okay. We have to fight the stigma, we have to encourage these people not to be hidden, we have to do a lot of psychoeducation, okay? Okay. Otherwise, those gentlemen are doing a lot of good jobs. Yes, thank you. And let people be themselves. Let the church take the, the front line in actually even loving those people who have mental challenges. Yes. Let them not be thrown out. Let them be treated with human dignity because they are human beings like anybody oh. else. Okay, and thank you. And by God like you and me. Okay? Thank you, Bogwa. Asante Sana for that. Uh, Maurice is on the line as well. Good morning, Maurice. Uh, um, good morning. Yes. Uh, I'm watching from Uganda. Yes, Karibu Sana. Okay, uh, according to suicide awareness, mm -hmm. you know nowadays there's more more stress, uh, according especially the livelihood of people. Mm -hmm. Maybe some, someone is going uh, is undergoing a, a a life challenge. Yeah. Job, feeding, mm -hmm. school fees. Uh, that's that's more people are nowadays in, uh, committing suicide. Right. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, Maurice here actually bringing up the issue even of finances, uh, a key, um, you know, cause, or rather, should I say, one of the number one ca causes that's leading people to depression and suicide. But going back to what you said, Doc, on people who do come to see you have attempted suicide before. It's, it's not someone who just woke up and decided by the, this is what I'm going to do. There has been something in the back happening behind the scenes. So it's someone going over and over again till 
probably on their sixth, seventh attempt, now it really does happen. And I actually want to bring Jane Mukami's story into the picture right now. Um, Jane Mukami, fitness guru, her brother actually did commit suicide, Stephen. And she actually went on to put a very emotional um, eulogy of her younger brother, Stephen, who committed suicide in the U.S. through a Facebook post. And let me just share this with you very quickly. Um, she went on to say that my heart bleeds with sadness, but I, and this is, you know, years ago, uh, but I am more angry than sad that my brother committed suicide a few hours ago. He was a 28-year-old ex-U.S. military man. And I'm angry because... Ever since we discovered that he possibly had PTSD or mental issues, we reached out to the court system, to the Kenyan embassy in D.C., to the U.S. embassy in Nairobi. But everybody could, went on to say that, by the way, there's nothing that we could do. And this is because Stephen went on to cut the family off for 12 months and refused to talk to them. At the end, he goes on to, uh, she goes on to say that, by the way, I am so upset because there is nothing that anyone could have done to help this boy. And when she finishes her post, she says, rest in peace, me too. I'm sorry that we failed you. As we talk a little bit about that, let's check out um, our next caller and then get back into this particular post. Good morning. Hello, good morning. Good morning. This is Patrick. Huh? Yes, Patrick. Now, I think I'm having the conversation and that people are now openly speaking up about these suicide issues. Eh? Yes. Now, my contribution is, I think social media is both a good thing and a curse that happened to this generation. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, you see Facebook, YouTube, they have influencers and engineers who actually are employed in the company mm -hmm. so that to create tension on things that people think are fashionable or something like that. Yeah. Now you see that is a very dangerous thing, though these social media networks will never let you know that they have influencers and engineers, mm -hmm. so that people comply to a certain status quo. Mm -hmm. Now, unlike in the past where people used to go out, pray, read, yeah. now everybody right now is on their phone, apparently. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you see, these are the kind of things that people need to go and read books, go out, pray, at least engage their minds because now yeah. the current environment we are in is very dangerous thank if you Patrick. for the young people and then again to finish up is that there is so much information mm -hmm. any information you need on the internet is there be mm -hmm. it good be it bad so the young people are having a very hard time okay. choosing on which particular set of information to pick up yeah which is apparently going to read them to making the wrong decision okay thank you so much for that patrick we appreciate your feedback on that keep talking to us through our social media platforms and of course give us a call if you do want to weigh in on our discussion as we talk about what are the solutions in regards to suicide it's all about suicide prevention uh, this month and of course september being this particular month we have to highlight this talk about it what can we do to help those who are suffering in silence at k24 tv on instagram facebook and Twitter. We're going to get back in just a moment, talk a little bit about this. There's more to come.